Hey everyone, today we'll be building a solid cabinet grow space from scratch. One of my favorite grow spaces is this custom cabinet from Super Closet. However, the cost of it is multiple times that of a typical grow tent setup. So today we'll be building a DIY cabinet grow space making it as user-friendly as possible, while still focusing on lowering the overall costs. And to do this, I'll be starting with an IKEA How Howlan cabinet, which is one of the cheapest steel cabinets they sell. At 1.5 by 1.5 by 2.5 feet tall, the floor space of this cabinet is big enough for a single plant. However, the height is a little too low for a traditional inline fan and grow light setup. So I'm going to get creative in substituting these two essential pieces. I'm also going with steel over something like particle board because it makes the installation of the equipment I want to use a lot easier, as you'll see soon. But a particle board cabinet will work fine as well and can lower the overall costs. It'll just take a little more work to mount everything onto it. Now, before I put this cabinet together, I want to cut out all the ports needed on the back of the cabinet, which is a smaller hole for the electrical wires and a larger hole for the exhaust fan. I was originally going to use a PC style fan for this based on the super closet design. But I actually found a better option with the AC Infinity Air Titan a ventilation fan that not only creates significantly more airflow, but conveniently can also be controlled by any AC Infinity controller. So I'll be able to provide the same exact type of automated environmental controls as I would have a Cloudline inline fan. And I can remove the back plate of this ventilation fan since I have no need for a protective grill. I drilled in the holes needed to lock the fan in place and then I cut out a hole large enough for the fan itself with some aviation snips, which are made to cut through sheet metal. I then used a hole saw to cut out the smaller hole to the same size as this wire pass-through grommet. And after covering up some of my mistakes, I installed the ventilation fan. I got this range hood carbon filter when searching for alternative options to a traditional inline fan carbon filter. And this is really cool because it can easily be mounted onto a flat surface, but it holds significantly less activated carbon since these aren't made to be used 24 seven. And if I had to change anything about this build, I would have not hot glue gunned this into place and instead drilled some holes to install a more replaceable friendly mounting option. Because once I started using this, the carbon filter only worked for about a month or two max before it needed to be replaced. And I mean, they come with these mounting holes already, plus they're not really that expensive. So it's definitely worth checking out if you have a limited space to work with. Now putting together this cabinet was ridiculously easy as all the panels just slotted into place with no tools required. And for the lighting, we're using a two sets of ion beam grow light bars in substitution of a traditional grow light. One S16 for the side walls and one S11 for the ceiling. These are made for supplemental and inner canopy lighting, but spec wise, they're using some of the best full spectrum diodes available. So on paper, these two should have no problems growing a single plant. In fact, by being able to provide lighting from all sides, these should produce even better results from the same amount of wattage. And after trying it out for a few months, I can confidently say that it absolutely does. They also have built-in magnets as part of their mounting system. So I can snap these right on with no tools required, which is great considering how little space I have to work with here. The best part though, is that these also directly connect to the controller 69 as well. And this controller will then let me monitor the temperature and humidity of the cabinet 
and automate all the devices connected to it. The built-in magnet on the controller also means that I'm able to snap this onto the back wall. And I don't need access to the controller since I can just monitor and control everything through the app. For the airflow inside the cabinet, I found this magnetic clip fan that I can leave on low speed pretty much 24-7. And although this isn't essential, I'm also adding in a Waze, that's W-Y-Z-E, camera to wirelessly monitor and time-lapse any grows in here. So with the steel walls, I can snap on all of this equipment and shift it around with these without the use of any tools. The cabinet itself isn't sealed by any means, so intake air isn't going to be a problem since it can pull in air from all the openings around the cabinet. But even with these openings, the only area I found to have any sort of noticeable light leak is from the front door. And I was originally going to use a sticky foam padding around the door to block this, like what Super Closet uses. But I first tried this magnetic tape as a simpler solution. And it worked so well in blocking the light that I just stuck with it. It doesn't look amazing or anything, but with the white backing, it's really not that noticeable from far away. Finally, I can add in a small lock since this cabinet has a built-in slot for it. And while I was at IKEA, I also found this plastic plate that fit into the cabinet really well. So we have a catch right now. I'll be posting my first grow log with this setup next week. And spoiler alert, it turned out way better than I expected, so stay tuned. <laughs>